welcome everyone to the Way Back Wayne Show. That's right, Way Back Wayne. What is the show? Well, I'm going to tell you. We're going to take all the rock and roll things that happened in Indianapolis from 1964 to 1967, and we're going to talk about them. We're going to revisit them. We're going to share our memories. That's right. We're going to talk about the bands from then. We're going to talk about the teen clubs and the music venues. Do you have any concert memories? The DJs that kept us going. The drive-in theaters when we got really hungry. And also the drive-in restaurants. Teen magazines. Newspaper articles. Even television shows like Bandstand 13, music stores, and any general memories you have of the 60s. Let's take a moment and listen to this Sounds Unlimited record. You did it before, you'll do it again. <laughs> How many bands did you go to see? The Boys Next Door? The Sir Winston and the Commons, I'll bet. Good old Don Basor and the guys.
The Dawn Five, The Sounds Unlimited, The Idle Few, The End. The Chosen Few? How about the Olivers? Him, Her, and Them. Do you know who Him, Her, and Them later became? Coven. That's right. Theme from Billy Jack. Jinx Dawson was the singer on that. The Shy Ones. Indeed, probably one of the first horn bands with rock era. The Joys of Life. The Fabulous Deacons, a band that's still going today, the Wright Brothers. Did you ever see the Chalets or the Lords of London? How about the Collegians, the Workmen, the Pendletons, the Knightsmen, the Thundermen? So that's quite a few bands for you to remember, but you let us know about others. I'm certain from 64 to 67, there are a bunch there that I failed to list. And that wasn't intentional, just simply we need your help. We're going to take a break here for a second. We do another commercial for you. This one, on something uh, most of us are familiar with, Coca-Cola. Be right back with you. The sun is shining down on this old blanket It's much too warm for even holding hands Even though your lips are so inviting We gotta leave our castles in the sand The temperature's rising My fever is climbing Now that you've had your Coke break, where did you dance, listen to the bands, and party? Remember Hillside Beach? How about Nora Teen Barn? The Glendale Shopping Center? That's right, on Tuesday nights. 
party time, the speckled axe, the Pendleton Pike Drive-In Theater. Now, can you imagine bands playing on the concession stand roof? That's what happened at the Pendleton Pike. And going to the state fair, where you've had Young America Fair for 10 days and 10 nights of rock and roll and battle of the bands. And in Indianapolis, the probably one of the top clubs, the Flame Club. There were actually three of them, you know. The first one on Short Ridge Road, that became so popular that they went to a second one down on the south side. I want to say maybe Emerson Road, something like that. And then that wasn't enough. They kept going south, and we ended up in Louisville. So there were three flame clubs. Right across from the fairgrounds was Merle's Decker, High Decker. Once again, a restaurant that also featured rock and roll bands. We had the Sherwood Country Club down there on the south, the Shelbyville Roller Rink. Televisions at the ranges, everybody goes through changes, the society arranges, everybody finds the same. No one living without reason, never recognize the season, close their eyes and hug the knees and lock the door. popular Tom Bredwell's Lacine. We had the Indiana Roof, the Pink Panther, the Straightaway in Speedway Shopping Center, the Whiteland Barn, Melody Skate Land, and over in Plainfield, Roy Maynard's had the House of Sound. You know, when you were drive, doing all this driving around, who did you listen to on the radio? Remember Bouncing Bill Baker? You know, he started on WIBC. That's right. Remember that? They were the rocker then. But shortly afterwards, a group of guys, and it wasn't a football team, by the name of Tom Mathis, Reb Porter, B.J. Byers, Jay Reynolds, Joe Light, Jack Sunday, Ron Hofer, Bill Danella, Jim Wright, and Bob Lyons. These guys all came together collectively as the WIFE good guys. Boy, talk about a control of a market. 
I think at one time they said they controlled 99.4% of the radio market. You know, as you can see, I may have gained a few pounds since 1963. But I think it's important to mention where we all went when we got hungry. Anybody here go to the teepee? You bet. You remember the special sauce? How about the pole? Al Green's Giant Burgers. Frisch's Big Boy. Borky's. Yeah, the chicken eaters like Borky's. Merle's Heidecker. Still open and operating today, the Mug and Bun. The Northwood, the first steakhouse in Indianapolis, Bonanza. And everybody went to the huddle, of course. You know, we unfortunately have lost some rockers who have passed away during the years. In memoriam, I'd like to recognize them. From the Dawn Five, Mike Nikoloff and Dave McCowan. From the Sounds Unlimited, Steve Foster. From the Boys Next Door, Jim Adams and Steve Drybread. From the Joes and Few, John Casella. From Ronnie and the Rascals, Ron Blackstone. The lead singer for several bands, Dan Hanley. The Idle Few, we've lost Ron Bennett, Rick Webster, and Dan McLean. Another real important ingredient of the 60s were booking agents and managers. Bands didn't always agree with what they, who they promoted or how they promoted it. So before I get into that, let's hear another commercial. This one's on band deodorant. Up close or uptight, Band Spray Deodorant is a day expanding experience because Band won't wear off as the day wears on. Band won't wear off as the day wears on. As the day wears on. As the day wears on. As the day wears There you go. It's good to do a deodorant commercial when you're talking normally about booking agents and managers. But anyway, Norm V and Dick Lynn started Dino Enterprises. The DI was for Dick and the NO was for Norm. That's how Dino got their name. The main manager in Indianapolis was Bill Overman. He had a company called Tower Management. Additional agents, Ray LaRue, Leo Crowder, Charlie Warpel, and Bill Craig worked with many of the area bands. And Dennis Rubenstein served as a manager for the end. A surprise maybe to you or something you wouldn't think about is the importance of music stores. Arthur's Music Store, which is still open today. Northside Music, who Arthur's eventually owned that too. And Southside Music, Harlan Brothers, and Nick Craig Music. Those five stores were very important because they brought all the musicians together into a store, whether it be for an accessory, a new instrument, uh, a PA system, 
and some of the better musicians from the bands became music instructors at the stores. So the music stores played a very, very important role. Other things that went on in the 60s, there were all the time battle of the bands. Every time you turned around, somebody was having a battle of the bands. The movie houses ran specials where trailers from England or or any could be from anywhere, a 20 minute trailer would pre, be shown in front of a uh, a movie. And that trailer would had rock bands. So you could go see your favorite rock band at the theater. The apartment stores got smart real quick and realized that these bands had tremendous followings, just unlimited followings. And so they started using bands at their fashion shows. It didn't take long for the department stores, like Ellis Ayers, William H. Block, and uh, Paul Harris, as an example, to figure out that by having local bands play at the fashion shows, it drew in the one big commodity they were looking for, girls who came to see, that's right, their favorite guys. So anyway, very part, important part of the, the era. And, uh, oh gosh, you know, aside from that, that gives you a real good idea of what Way Back Wayne is about and can be about. We're going to rely a lot on you people to provide us with stuff and to come on the show if you want uh, and talk about things that you remember. It was a great time for all of us. And so the idea was born to bring you way back, Wayne. So anyway, that's the show for today. Next show coming up, and that'll be listed at the back. Uh, we'll have part one of our Sounds Unlimited interview. In the coming months, we'll have many of these bands, the members that are around, in for an interview. So until then, thank you. Send us your memories. And that's the Way Back Wayne Show. Bye. <laughs>